this is my first year working with this group. I had probably about half the class in their sophomore year, um, and then junior year I had to share them with the other um, art teachers. Um, so it's interesting to see how much they've progressed in the time that I had them in their sophomore year. Um, but it's a challenge for me to have brand new students in their senior year because I'm not very familiar with the way that they naturally work. Um, so I'm currently trying to go through all of their portfolios and figure out what's missing and tailor the assignments according to their own specific needs. So my favorite art piece, uh, I don't think I have a name for it, but along the lines I'll probably title them, you know, accordingly. And uh, yeah, I drew it on a tablet, on a, on a drawing program. It wasn't traditional, it wasn't on paper, it was on my computer. A lot of my digital drawings lately I've just been putting um, pictures, high quality pictures of uh, stuff that I like, like album covers and patterns and what have you, onto uh, clothing on the characters I draw. And um, what I drew, what I pasted on, was uh, the album cover of Cherry Bomb by uh, Tyler the Creator. And uh, yeah, I, I listened to that recently and it's a really great album. I really love it. And uh, yeah, just listening to it, just. Uh, just made me want to draw that out, yeah. The art piece is um, the bestiary. It was a combination of three or four different animals and we had to illustrate it in a human setting. So I chose to do a saber-toothed tiger, a polar bear, and an owl um, because I thought it would be really interesting and it sort of represents different parts of our personality. And I really like it. I like how it's not perfect, that there's different sort of splots of ink on it and little parts where it's messed up, but mostly the detail is really pristine. So I tried to get it you know, mostly together. So this is my sketchbook that's mainly from my junior year. It's not like a regular sketchbook, it's mostly finished spreads. A lot of it was assignments from class, but I personalized them to me, and a lot of them were done on first intuition, so they're done like straight from my head, I don't really, I didn't really think them through too much. So they show my process really well, even though they're not process drawings, they're finished pieces. And it's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite pieces from my time here. Obviously it was done for grades originally, but then I started to realize that I wanted to go to art school and I needed to be able to take things that were other people's ideas and transform them into my own idea. So she would give us some vague, some sort of specific assignments, and I would just sort of let my style flow through into it, and I would individualize it as much as I could. And I think it shows who I am as an artist really well. I know that this year they have a lot at stake um, because a lot of them are applying to the same art colleges, and all of the portfolios have to be up to par since they're almost competing against each other. Carnegie Mellon University. Rhode Island School of Design, School of the Arts Institute of Chicago, SUNY Purchase, SUNY New Paltz. With art school, you can't really gauge if you'll get in or not. You can just sort of be like, ah, yay. Um. <clears throat> My top choice is probably School of the Arts Institute of Chicago um, versus Purchase, but for different reasons. Um, SAIC is one of the top design schools in the country. I actually have already been accepted into their school. Um, they, I like the program. I like how they sort of can structure it and control what's happening. Like for the other top school is RISD. Um, that's another like really high design school that people want to go to, but they're very different in that sense. So RISD is more like classical learning, just like the structural like rules set, but um, Chicago is more based on like conceptual design and like thinking about reasoning behind things. I, I love art and it's passion of mine, but to go into like the actual arts and see where I could land a job or things like that or like actually make a living out of it, um, I kind of believe that I have to be realistic when it comes to that. So there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of things and I don't I don't think I could make a living out of it. I think I could make a, like a pastime out of it. So I don't, I don't see myself, uh, I don't see myself dropping it completely. That's not, that's not happening. I love, I love to draw and I love 
the arts in general, but I do see myself having it as a second, as a, a pastime, more than a full-time job. So it, it can be risky. Graphic design itself is one of the least risky um, opportunities for an artist. Uh, but like, let's say I were to go in for fine arts, it's a lot harder to make it in fine arts. Uh, so like when you hear about the starving artist, you would think of a fine, art, a fine artist who does paintings and then if they can't sell their paintings, and they've spent their entire college career focusing on that, then they're a little, they're kind of, they're kind of screwed. <laughs> on another point, let's say I'm bad at it, <laughs> uh, then no one will hire me, <laughs> and then I'll be stuck with this graphic uh, design degree that won't do me any good because I am bad at it. So that'll be an issue too. But I think I'll be fine. <laughs>